Good morning, everybody. It is a fabulous Friday. It's a warm Friday, humid, sticky, but hey, we're blessed anyway to look at it. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Dads, be like Joseph. Absolute beautiful day. It's a little warm out there and a lot sticky, but hey, God's in control. He's doing some great and mighty things, and we are blessed. No way, any way you look at it, we're blessed. God is in control. He's doing some awesome things. Before I get started, take just a minute. If you join with me, I know uh, Sister Barbara Clay. Uh, she called me the other day with some concerns of going to a doctor and got kind of a bad report. And she's going uh, for a second uh, checkup today for another doctor. So if you'll join with me, we'll just pray for Sister Barbara. She'll get a good report today and everything will be great. And uh, she can get her cataracts fixed and uh, it'll be a wonderful road to recovery. Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord. Great and mighty are you, great and mighty things are you doing. And Father, I just ask you right now that you'll be with Sister Barbara. She goes to the doctor today at 1030, I believe. Father, she'll get a better report. Father, things are all up to you. We know you hold us in the hollow of your hand. We know great and mighty things are possible. You designed our bodies. You can heal our bodies. So we ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, your word tells us by Jesus' stripes we were healed, and by Jesus' stripes we are healed. So we claim that healing right now in Sister Barbara's eyes. Father, I thank you and I praise you for the great testimony that's going to come out of this, and we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I said I'm so thankful you're joining with us on this Friday. It's a beautiful day, sun shining. Uh, it's been been a busy week. Uh, a lot of things going on at the campground. A lot of things going on here, and so you know. But hey, God's in control. I want to change a thing. I'll be. I love being where God wants me to be. I love doing what He He wants me to do. Because when I'm doing what He wants me to do, things just fall into place, and uh, great things are happening. Uh, I've got a word I believe God has given me for us today, and it's, it kind of focuses on dads, men's work close to Father's Day this weekend, and so um, dads be like Joseph. There's a Spanish story of a father and son who had many fights and many battles, and the son ran away and the father set off to find him. He searched for months to no avail. Finally, in a last desperate effort to find him, the father put an ad in the Madrid newspaper. The ad read, Dear Paco, meet me in front of this newspaper office at noon Saturday. All is forgiven, and I love you, your father. On Saturday, 800 Pacos showed up looking for forgiveness and love from their fathers. Whether or not we had an earthly father that has been seeking us, seeking our spiritual well-being, we have a heavenly father who loves us 
so much. He sent his only begotten son. I want to speak to you about a man, a father who is very often overlooked. He is often overshadowed by the prominence of his wife. I'm talking about Joseph, the husband of Mary, you know, adopted father of Jesus. Even as God chose Mary to be the one who gave birth to his son, so is mighty providence he chose Joseph to be the father to Jesus and raise him into manhood. Mary and Joseph were chosen together to be parents. God searched the earth. He found a young girl, a teenager, engaged to be married, of whom the Bible says she found favor with God. She was a choice young lady, God-fearing young lady. But no, God also went looking for her father. He had called Mary and Joseph as a couple, and here's the point of it. God was demonstrating for us the role of the father is a very important one. Fathers are not only needed for the physical act of conceiving a child, they're also needed for the spiritual act of raising that child. This child, Jesus, was conceived in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit. A miracle took place, so technically there was no need for a man to be involved in the conception, but a man was still needed to fill the role of father in Jesus' childhood. Having said that, let me say a word of single parents here today. Please don't despair that your children seem like they may be beyond hope because father is gone or mother is gone. This is not the case. God is so gracious. Though my father and my mother forsake me, yet the Lord take me up. Single parents today, we salute you. We honor you. God bless you for your diligence with your children. So Joseph was chosen. Just as God had looked for a godly young woman to bring forth a child, he looked for a godly man to be the father. What an inspiring model of fatherhood Joseph was. God made a good choice. He, was, he is a wise God. Let's look together for a few minutes some of the things the Bible tells us about this man, Joseph. Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was his father. As his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take your Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit. She will bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which is being translated God with us. Verse 24, Then Joseph, being aroused from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, took to him his wife. He did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and they called his name Jesus. Matthew 2, 13 and 14. And when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. 14 says, When, we were, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and they departed for Egypt. In Matthew 2, 19, and 20, 19 through 21, now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, go back to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life were dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. What do we know about Joseph from the Bible? Number one, Joseph was a loving man. The scriptures draw this picture for us wonderfully caring, affectionate man, and we see this firstly in his relationship with his wife Mary. Joseph finds out Mary's pregnant. How does it make him feel? Angry? Betrayed? The penalty for adultery in the Old Testament is death by stoning. 
this penalty applied to infidelity during a engagement as well as marriage. Now, by New Testament times, things have changed somewhat, but the matter was still treated as a grave offense. Upon discovery that Mary was pregnant, Joseph would have been obliged to divorce her. Divorce was required to break off an engagement, and this would expose Mary to public shame and humiliation. But when but even before God spoke to Joseph, Joseph wasn't operating from vengeance or bitterness of heart. The Bible says he was minded to put her away secretly. There were ways in which a divorce could be enacted very quietly without the involvement of a judge, and Joseph was already considering the best way to do that. Joseph was kind. He loved Mary. It's based on a real commitment and husband's the Bible says to us today we must love our lives with all that we have. Joseph was a loving man towards Mary. The most important thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother, David, o. Mc David McKay. Creating a warm, caring, supportive, encouragement environment is probably the most important thing you can ever do for your family, Stephen Covey. When Mary was about to give birth to Jesus, there was no room for them in the end, but Joseph did the very best he could to see that Mary was taken care of. But we also see Joseph was a loving man as a relationship toward Jesus. When the child came along, the child he had not conceived, there was no attitude in Joseph saying, this boy isn't my flesh and blood. There was no resentment or indifference toward him, no lack of love at all. Joseph adopted Jesus as his own. He protected him from the hatred of Herod. He nurtured him and cared for him. He taught Jesus his own trade of carpentry. He adopted the one the rest of the world would soon reject. Joseph paid a price to be the father to Jesus. Number two, Joseph was a devout man. He was a man who obeyed God. He explicitly followed the Lord's leading and direction. He didn't follow his own marked out plan for life. He wanted God's plan for his life. So when God spoke to him in a dream and told him, Mary, Mary, even though she was pregnant, he obeyed. Then when God spoke and said, take Mary and Jesus and flee to Egypt for their safety, he immediately obeyed. He closed up his business and left. And God said, it's okay now, head back to Israel. Again, he did as he was directed. He was a man of obedience. He was a man of faith. It takes faith to pack up your bags and head off to a foreign country with no prospects, no planning, simply on the basis of God said so. He had faith and he obeyed the dream. He, would, he could have made excuses, stay where the prospects were good, but no, he was a man of faith. Fathers listening this morning, your faith will speak to your children. Raise them up in an environment of faith toward God. There was a farmer who had toiled over a bumper crop of grain, a badly needed crop of grain, a badly needed crop that was going to pay off creditors and secure the family for another year. But just a few days before it was due to be harvested, a freak wind and hailstorm ravaged the property, and the harvest was lost. The man stood with the little boy looking over the field of destroyed grain, the boy expecting to hear his father cursing in despair, but instead his dad began to sing softly, Oh, rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Years later, the boy grown into manhood said, That was the greatest sermon I ever heard. His father has shown him faith where the rubber meets the road. Joseph was leaning on God. He was a man of faith. And one more thing, he was a man who was faithful in his spiritual duty. He set an example for his family going to the temple, attending the feast. He was regularly in going to God's house. Luke 4.16 says, So he came to Nazareth where he was brought up and his custom was he went to the synagogue on a Sabbath day and stood up to read. The he's and the his 
talking about Jesus. He had learned from his father, his earthly father, the importance of being in the temple, being in the presence of God. So let's recap. Joseph was a loving man. He loved towards his wife, loved towards his son, loved towards his whole family. Secondly, he was a devout man, a man of obedience and faith, being faithful in spiritual duty. But finally, Joseph was a wise man. Joseph was wise because he lived as the one who redeemed the time. By all accounts, it seems that Joseph had a shortened life. We don't read of him after Jesus' childhood. At the cross, Jesus charged John with the care of his mother. So it seems that Joseph was taken from them prematurely. We don't read of him. But Joseph had used what time he had been given honorably and wisely. He had provided for his family. He had set an example for them that they would remember. And he raised them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Jesus was not the only child he had. He raised other boys for the Lord also, and possibly daughters as well. He had other sons. Two of them, at least, were greatly used by God. They wrote the books of the Bible, James and Jude. James was the leader of the church in Jerusalem. Joseph raised his children in the ways of the Lord. He left behind a legacy after his lifetime. Are we really walking in the love of God as Joseph did, walking in kindness, walking in graciousness, walking in mercy? Are we living a devout, honorable, and godly life, obedience and faith and faithful and spiritual duties? Are we redeeming the time as Jesus did, encouraging our families at every opportunity, setting an example, providing for their needs? In talking with fathers, the verse is often used in 1 Timothy 5, 8. But if, every, if anyone does not provide for his own, especially those under his household, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Some say, oh yes, I provide for my family. When what they mean is they pay a check, put a check on the table every week. But... What about the other provisions they need from you? Affection, example, godly counsel, laughter and warmth, loving concern. We must provide for our own men. Let's be challenged together. This man, Joseph, inspires me. I'm quite sure he wasn't perfect, but he was devoted, and he was doing the very best he could, redeeming his time. From Ann Lander's column on September 29, 1999, it's titled, Parents' Behavior Can Help Their Children. I, I think it's well passing on to you. A youth minister who was assigned to a youth correction prison for a summer work asked the kids for clues why they had ended up in that institution. He then asked them to draw up a code for parents to follow zeroing in on specific areas where the parents had failed. Here's what emerged. Fa parents, keep cool. Don't fly off the handle. Keep the lid on when things go wrong. Kids need to see how much better things turn out when people keep their tempers under control. Parents don't get strung out on booze or too many pills. When we see our parents reaching for those crutches, we get the idea it's perfectly okay for us to reach for a bottle or a pill when things get heavy. Children are careful observers and great imitators. Bug us a little. Be strict. Show us who's boss. We need to know we have got some strong supports under us. When you cave in, we get scared. Don't blow your class. Stay on your pedestal. Don't try to dress, dance, or talk like your kids. You embarrass us, and you look ridiculous. Light a candle. Show us the way. Tell us God's not dead. He's not sleeping or on vacation. We need to believe in something bigger and stronger than ourselves. Scare the hell out of us. If you catch us lying, stealing, being cruel, get tough. Let us know why what we did was wrong and press on us the importance of not repeating such behavior. 
When we need punishment, dish it out. But let us know you still love us. Even though we let you down, it will make us think twice before we make that mistake again. Call our bluff. Make it clear you mean what you say. Don't cave in. Don't be intimidated by our threats to drop out of school or leave home. Stand up to us. We'll respect you. Kids don't want everything they ask for. Be honest. Tell us the truth no matter what. Be straight arrow about everything. We can make it. We can take it. Lukewarm answers make us uneasy. We can smell uncertainty a mile away. The bottom line is we want you to tell us like it is. Praise us when we deserve it. If you give us a few compliments once in a while, we will be able to accept the criticism a lot easier down the road. That's what our kids are saying to us. Are we listening? Dads, it's very important, and moms, grandparents, foster parents, whatever the situation may be, it is so very important that we rely on God and that they see us relying on God. It's a difficult world we live in right now, but, you know, God's in control. He puts authorities in place, and he moves authorities out of place. Don't always understand, but I know he holds this whole world in the hollow of his hand. There's nothing that takes place that's taken him by surprise. There's nothing going on that he hasn't created. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this day. God, you are so worthy to receive the praise and the glory. The awesome things you're doing with us and through us, Father, I, I just don't understand. But I know you hold us in the hollow and you'll never, ever let us go. Father, I know we can allow ourselves to slip out of your grasp but you hold tighter and tighter, and I thank you for that. Father, those that need direction and guidance, those that need help, Father, I ask you right now to pour into their hearts and lives. Give them direction, Father. Let them know that you're always there. You're always there to help. You're always there to help them through what needs to be done. God, I praise you. I thank you for this time. Help us, Lord, to ever be relying on you. For we know, God, you'll never, ever leave us nor forsake us. You stick closer than the brother. I thank you, Lord, and we'll give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Thank you for being with us. You're such a blessing. It's been an awesome day. It's going to be a great weekend. Brother Roger Whetstone and Sister Glenda will be with us Sunday for our Father's Day. Be here. You're an encouragement to us when you, you attend. Those that can't, we understand. That's why we live stream, so you can take part and be a part. But, hey... Be blessed. You're a blessing. Have a great day and a great weekend. Dads, we appreciate you. We love you. Hold true to the faith because God is in control. The lights are still on at the lighthouse, and we're going to make it with Jesus. Have a great day.